a few months ago, we've talked about discoveries in regards to synthetic life. Living organisms created entirely by combining DNA and the cell structure from various species. In a sense, representing a kind of a Frankenstein monster cell. And in the last video that you can find in the description, Japanese scientists were actually able to add genes to make this artificial cell now move around. But in this video, we're going to be discussing this new study that as always you can find in the description below, that in a nutshell discovers something else really unusual about these synthetic cells. But I guess first, well, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss Cynthia once again. The unusual bacterial organism developed by reducing DNA of a known bacteria, eventually turning it into what the scientists now refer to as synthetic organism. Something that, even though it might sound controversial, actually is really not, mostly because of the reasons for why this was done and what the scientists are trying to learn from all of this. And the idea here is really simple. Take a bacteria with the smallest possible genome, or really any organism, it doesn't actually have to be a bacteria, but bacteria generally have the smallest DNA of all organisms, and then essentially remove anything that doesn't seem to be useful, reducing DNA to the absolute minimum in order to see if it can actually still create an organism that you started with, or at least something similar. And so here the main point was to reduce a living organism to the absolute essential genes, with only one main reason, trying to understand exactly what's required genetically in order to build an organism completely from scratch. This actually even has a name now, it's known as Mycoplasma Laboratorium, because it's basically a bacterium produced entirely in a lab. But the early research that started a couple of decades ago began with some of the bacteria with some of the smallest genome. At first it was the bacteria known as Mycoplasma genitalium, something that's actually sexually transmitted and something that many of us do have in our bodies, depending on how naughty we are. But because it has a relatively small genome, it was a pretty solid first target. But eventually several teams realized that this is a much better target. This particular bacterium is even simpler and in essence is a parasite living inside the intestines of various goats or a lot of other similar animals. And intriguingly, parasites in general, because of their lifestyle, tend to lose a lot of genes that are no longer required. And that's because once they find a lifestyle that seems to provide them with everything, they no longer need a lot of other functions and thus eventually lose a lot of genes. And theoretically, bacterial parasites would have the simplest genome out there. And that's exactly what the scientists discovered here and why they decided to use this particular bacterium. Bacterium whose genome is actually really small. It contains approximately 901 identified genes. But the thing is, the majority of these genes are still unknown to us. We don't really know what they do. And so, through sheer trial and error, by removing each of the genes individually, at some point, various scientific teams were able to remove 41% of all of the previous genes, with just 473 genes identified to be essential for this bacterium to function and to survive. So basically, half of the genes here were surprisingly not needed at all. It's unclear if they were totally not needed, but the bacterium was doing just fine without any of these genes. But interestingly, even here, there are quite a lot of unknown genes or genes whose function is not understood. Also, just to give you a comparison here, today we believe human genome contains approximately 100,000 genes, but only 6,000 so far have been definitively identified. So here, this is definitely a lot less. And so 150 of these have function that is not really clear. Nevertheless, because of this, this organism is now officially known as first truly synthetic life out there. But now we know that even smaller genome is technically possible by using something with an even smaller genome. For example, here we have something with only 169 genes. And intriguingly, what makes this synthetic and artificial is the fact that everything here was constructed artificially by adding various genes and the cytoplasm from other cells and then putting everything together kind of like Legos. In other words, they knew exactly what genes to take, they knew exactly what parts to take, they put it all together and it seems to have worked. But all of this was done a while ago, several years ago as a matter of fact, with an older video explaining all of this. And as you might learn from that recent video from just a few months ago, now the scientists have also started adding a lot of other genes, including genes for motility, allowing these cells to move. So basically now we have a moving Frankenstein's monster, or I guess bacterial Frankenstein's monster. 
but you can actually learn about all of these new advances in the link in the description with a website essentially dedicated to all of the new advances and new experiments and of course new studies about this strange synthetic organism. But now we have a new discovery that's kind of difficult to explain and is definitely unexpected. It's coming from this paper, Evolution of a Minimal Cell. In essence, testing something really simple and something that we thought we understood pretty well. Evolution. Specifically, evolution in regards to mutation of different genes. And this is of course based on a lot of different experiments from the past, where a lot of this has already been done with a lot of other bacteria and a lot of other species. Here the main concept is gene selection. Or essentially the genetic variation responsible for certain types of selection in order for the stronger organism to eventually survive. With I guess one famous example being the Darwin's finches. Slightly different genes, responsible for the slightly different beak, resulted in different types of finches dominating certain types of environments on the Galapagos Islands. So for example if a bird had a much bigger beak that would be much better for opening things like seeds, that type of gene would become prevalent in this particular environment. And this also relates to another intriguing concept known as the population bottleneck. In essence, some kind of an event, for example some kind of a catastrophe, that dramatically reduces genetic variation, even potentially leading to extinction events. Suggesting that an organism with more genes and obviously more variability is more likely to survive a certain event, and in some sense, by creating this synthetic organism, you could almost see this as a kind of a population bottleneck. We have this new organism that has approximately 50% less genes compared to a similar bacteria from a similar environment that was not genetically modified. And so at least on paper, it would look like the synthetic organism would not really be very adaptable and would not be able to mutate very well. As a matter of fact, it might even seem like it might be prone to extinction much easier. Because some of those genes that were previously removed might have had some hidden function such as providing some survival benefits. And so at least on paper, if we were to put both of these organisms, the natural one and the modified, in the same environment, the assumption here would be that the natural organism would most likely outcompete the synthetic organism in most situations. Especially when it comes to more difficult conditions or conditions more difficult for survival, since the synthetic organism just doesn't really have a lot of genes that could provide additional benefits. But that's on paper, that's what was assumed. And that's what the scientists behind this paper wanted to test. They wanted to find out if this is actually what's going to happen. Turns out, it was the opposite. And that's of course the surprising part. Here they introduced the SYN3B, the third generation of this organism, and the original cells that were not modified, to various challenging conditions for approximately 300 days. This would be equivalent to about 2000 bacterial generations, or in human terms that would be like 40,000 years. They then essentially allowed these organisms to do their own thing, and check the results afterwards. And to their surprise, compared to the original, the new strain was evolving approximately 40% faster. And on top of this, it didn't just evolve. It seemed to have regained all of the fitness that was lost previously when many of the genes were removed. And this is where I should be playing that Jurassic Park theme and quoting Jeff Goldblum when he says, life uh, finds a way. Because that's what seems to have happened here as well. For reasons still not understood, when placed in exactly the same conditions, after 300 days, the synthetic cells outcompeted everything else, becoming the dominant strain and taking over the entire environment. And exactly why this is happening is anyone's guess. Theoretically, the complexity of other cells should give them a bit of an advantage, but it clearly doesn't. Instead, giving the advantage to the synthetic cells that are able to do everything much quicker and much more efficiently. On top of this, you can actually see the main difference between these cells, which once again really surprised everyone. The size. The original cells are actually able to grow in size because they have all of the genes. The artificial cells are missing some of the genes responsible for the formation of membrane. And because of this they cannot expand their volume and essentially maintain their size. And so even though it was preferential to grow bigger in size, these synthetic cells somehow found a way around it and managed to create all of the function needed without growing bigger physically. And so yeah, all of this so far, all of these discoveries are to some extent, at least for biologists, kind of mind-blowing. Mind-blowing mean. Especially because at the moment it's not clear what genes were evolved, why they evolved so quickly, 
And what exactly is it about the natural selection that we still don't understand, especially coming from this very unusual example? Because it essentially suggests that the simplest organism was able to somehow optimize much faster and eventually take over the entire environment. Or in biological terms, it became a lot more genetically fit even though it technically shouldn't have. In essence, regaining all the ability that were lost when the genes were artificially removed. How it was able to do so is anyone's guess. Okay, I might have one guess, but it's a very, very long shot here. From a lot of previous research, we know bacteria are generally also very good at stealing others' genes. They're basically able to share and recover genes that are often found in the environment. And so because all of the bacteria were in the same environment, there's maybe a slight chance for some kind of a genetic mixture with the synthetic bacteria eventually recovering some of the function by basically consuming the genes from other bacteria. It's a big guess, there's no proof yet, but at least for now that's maybe one possible explanation. And so here it would be very important to test if these new bacteria, the synthetic bacteria, still had the same small genome, or if they actually changed something, adopting in the process and basically consuming things from the environment. We'll probably learn more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out all of the links in the description below, check out some of the previous videos with previous discoveries about this bacterium, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.